What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to, well, I guess this is the first kind of sample challenge we've done in this format. So welcome, everybody, to another 343 sample challenge. I'm happy to have you all here. Shout out to everybody uh, in the chat. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a really exciting stream today because for the past month, you all have been working so hard on flipping this cool uh, saxophone sample by our own Max Wild 343 Labs co-founder. Um, so that was really fun. You all saw me do it on one of my streams, like last week or the week before. And you all have been working with the same sample. So I can't wait to see what you all did. I've actually, I've only like listened to a little bit of some of the submissions. So I'm going to be reacting for real in real time here with you all today. Um, and the winner will of course win Isotope Ozone 9. So that's really exciting. There can of course only be one winner. Um, and we're going to do our best to judge. And on that note, we have two amazing judges today. Please welcome um, Nefertiti Gold and Justin Beck. Welcome, my friends. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having us, Tetro. Yeah. All right. Looking forward to it. Real quick, do you guys want to do a little bit of a quick intro? Nefertiti, do you want to go first? Oh, man, a quick intro. Um, I'm Nefertiti Gold, singer, songwriter. Became a producer last year and I've been pushing and working pretty much nonstop since. And new to the 343 Labs creative team. Yes, I'm brand new to the team and I'm happy. <laughs> Heck yeah. And Justin, yeah. what about you? My name is Justin Beck and I am a music producer and songwriter and composer, and of course, a teacher and instructor at 343 Labs. And, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I have a background in pretty much every stage of the music production process. So I'm going to judge you guys hard. Heck yeah. Well, regardless today, even though there can only be one winner of the Isotope Ozone 9, um, I think it's going to be really, really valuable for, for all of our entrants to hear what we have to say in terms of feedback uh, for your tracks. And then also being a part of this community, I think is really great too, because everybody's kind of learning music production in our Discord um, and doing these challenges as a way to push ourselves out of our comfort zone, learn new skills, etc. So if you're not in the 343 Labs Discord and you didn't participate this time around, we will have more sample challenges in the future. So use the link in the description join the discord and get in on the next challenge or just get in on the fun community because we do all kinds of fun stuff all the time uh too lots of amazing people in the chat hello i'm not going to read off names today because there's uh, a bunch of you coming from the 343 labs channel and from my channel um so that's great well like i alluded to at the beginning i flipped the sample on stream and that was a lot of fun nefertiti gold i heard that you also flipped the sample yes i did and, and I, I had a lot of fun with it that's awesome. And then, of course, since you're one of the judges, you are not eligible now to win. But no. I think we should upset. still uh, give everybody a, a quick listen to uh, what um, what a judge can do with the sample. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, Definitely. let's give a listen to uh, Nefertiti's flip of the sample. Uh, here we go. Oh, I'll actually hit play. There we go. Vibes. Sometimes things oh, all vocals, go right. huh? Always tripping when it don't yeah. go right. Maybe you should give it just one try. Maybe let's give it just one try. One try. I've been around you. When I am, you never seem to. Want me to be around you. What am I supposed to do? Every time I come to you. I love the space on the drums. What are we supposed to do? Tell me what we supposed to do. Sometimes things don't go right. Always shipping when it don't go right. Maybe you should give it just one try. Maybe let's give it just one try. One try, one try. Vocal chops. What a vibe. Okay, now I have to tell you, I'm very curious to hear how did you flip the sample? Because there is, there's a couple ways to go about these sample challenges, right? Like really obvious, yeah. like I chopped the sample. Like you can very clearly hear the sax sample. And then your approach 
seems like very different because you totally transformed it somehow. Yeah, I actually I took a piece of the sack sample and I loaded it up into the pigments sampler. Oh, and then I modulated like the cutoff, the resonance, and then I loaded up a wavetable engine on top of it and then modulated some more stuff and basically created a pad. And from there, played some random chords and then it just exp- inspired some other wow. parts and it just kind of went haywire from there. That's dope. I'm curious to see yeah. if anybody else went that out there with uh, the sample flip. So that's exciting. I'm curious to see like the, the range of ways people flip the sample today. Uh, Michael G had a funny comment in chat. This is the exact track that made me throw my project in the trash and crawl under my desk. So there oh. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't no. say that. <laughs> that's funny. I think it's important. Like we're going to judge these tracks uh, based on, you know, where we think the producer is at. We're going to try to give feedback um, yeah, that's applicable to the producers, no matter where you are in your music production journey. We're not we're not like like the Timbaland streams out here where he's just going to like completely no. roast <laughs> you if you're no, you don't have a platinum hit on your hands. But what do you all think? Are we ready to get into the entries for real this time? Good stuff, Nefertiti. I like yours. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm definitely ready. I was you have to forgive me. I was lagging behind because I'm I'm discord this functional so yeah um, actually justin didn't have a discord account up until like two minutes before we started the stream that's not true that's that. not true he had to get in he connected to his internet via dial-up today it's amazing that we're even getting oh, him wow. on this zoom call oh <laughs> dude yeah man i got that old school AOL, AOL exactly. six minutes you know oh memories all right, so the first submission I want to check out, I'm just going to go in chronological order here in the Discord, is from Falguna, and it's uploaded right to Discord. So just flipped the sack sample recorded by at Falguna. Max Wild. Hope you All right, like so we're going to give a real-time feedback after each of these, is that correct? Yeah, after. I might. We, we can say some things as we react, but after, we'll give some, oh, yeah, some yeah, real feedback. Yeah. Great, fantastic. All right, here we go, Falguna. Falguna, let's hear it. Three, two, one. Falcon is in chat too. What's up, my friend? Woo! So smooth. Who broke your heart, Falcon? <laughs> Yeah, nice work, Falguna. I'll read that was one really nice one comment from the chat first and foremost. Common Beats says, "I think I may be pregnant just listening to this." Wow, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot. Turn. I thought this was PG. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> um, I should also mention Max Wild himself in the chat. Thank you for giving us this awesome sample. Um, I'll yeah. Say real quick, like my thoughts on this track. I, this is the first track that I like listened to the first five seconds of, and then I stopped because I wanted to react to it in real time, and I was like, Phew, this is smooth. It slowed down the tempo, the original tempo of the sample a little bit um, and a little more of that more traditional approach, like actually chopping the, the sample in a way that we can hear it. And I think it fit the mood of the track for sure. Like they built a track around the sample that um, I wouldn't have known that the sax wasn't original to this track. You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. I agree with that. Um, never, yeah. Go ahead, Justin. Do you want to go first? What did you think? Sure, sure, sure. Just to piggyback off what you were just saying. Um, yeah, this was super strong. I, by the way, if you guys ever see me typing on my phone, so I'm writing up notes. Um, uh, so yeah, I thought that the production was really, really nice. The drums sounded fantastic. There was, it was full, but there was also a sense of space in between everything. Um, my only real feedback actually had to do with the saxophone sample itself with regards to how it was incorporated. 
I thought it could have been louder, mm -hmm. um, more in your face, and that it felt ever so slightly. And this this is like a really nitpicky piece of critique because I thought this was a very high level of execution. Um, I think that it it didn't feel entirely like it was a part of the recording of the whole of the whole record, quote unquote. Um, I think that there's like a little bit of reverb or something to blend it in ever so slightly with the chords or delay. It felt like it was in a slightly different world. Sure. Um, but you know, that may have also been a creative choice since it is of course a sample, but uh, that was really my only feedback. I thought the chord, um, the harmonization that was done with the chords underneath it was totally. exceptional. And there were a couple of choices that I wouldn't have, uh, that I was surprised at hearing, especially some of those half diminished chords. They sounded really great. Heck yeah, that's what we brought you here for, Justin. Talk about those half diminished chords. Yes. I feel the exact same way. I thought the the chords that were played underneath it, I think, just shows how much of a strong ear you have to just take a melody and then like create something underneath it and just build from there and just so much like emotion and expression. Yeah. But it's simple at the same time. So that was that's a good start. Absolutely. That is a fire way to kick off. So thank you, Falguna, for that entry. Oh, our very own John Selway in the chat. Hello, John. Thank you for joining Ooh, us. Oh, John, yes. Happy to have you here. <laughs> all right. We got to keep things rolling because we want to get to all the submissions. We'll, we will be able to showcase all the submissions today, which is great. Um, the next one is by uh, Wino, I believe, or Parina from chat. Let me open this up because this is a YouTube link and I'm not going to play it yet. I'll give you the three, two, one. Um, but it's called. Oh, so this this person is trying to get people to rap on this beat, I think, because it says free Benny the Butcher type beat, prod by Wino. So maybe if there are rappers or vocalists out there and you hear something you like, you might want to jump yeah, on. We this. may have to ask Max about the uh, publishing situation. Oh on this sample. yes, I heard Max Wild uh, <laughs> command steep royalties on his samples. That's what I've heard. All right, let's give this track a listen. Three, two, one. Carpe diem. Hey. Gotta have the tag. Gotta have the beat tag. is hitting for sure. some of our feedback because we got like a minute or something left all right first of all i like this um kind of acoustic style approach you know that kind of like traditional hip-hop style approach i think there's some like mixing stuff going on I'm, I'm sure justin you'll get a little more into that um but overall instrumentation the sax the piano the acoustic hip-hop style drums i really liked and i uh, especially like that drum fill that kind of happens at the end of every uh four bars or whatever it may be um i like the way that sounds it comes in a little hot but that was a nice feature of the track the bass line i'll say i think the bass is a yeah. good sound the bass line is a little um 
uh, it's not locking in with the drum groove as much. I think the bass could groove a little bit more. I'll let you all uh, uh, stack on that criticism. But Nefertiti, why don't you take this one uh, first? Oh man, I I just have good things to say. Like I, I I can't. I'm the good cop today. But um, that's fine. I just thought it it uh I felt like the the arrangement had like a good amount of variety. I felt like it it didn't get boring i didn't feel bored like at all i just felt like there was like a groove that kind of just kept pushing the track along and i i thought it really i i thought it sat well in the track the the sample totally yeah justin what did you think um i i love this uh i think for, for anyone who is even vaguely familiar with the type of music that i make you'll know that this was like gonna be a little biased towards how much I like this Your one because of how bluesy it is. Yeah. But um I I actually like didn't have a problem with the the way the bass line was fitting in there because it sounded like it was actually quite literally played live. Um, totally I appreciate it. Did have a live feel. And so you know there's I think there's always a little bit of room to sort of just like hear and feel. My yeah my main I, I love the way I wrote in, the, in my in my note I love the way that he abused the sample in sure. terms of like he really was playing with it throwing it around and you know showing off and doing cool stuff like that with how he was rearranging it and chopping it and that was cool um yeah i mean to your point you know like uh, this may have just you know hard to locate exactly where in the production it was happening but it sounded like it was either hitting a limiter too hard or hitting a compressor too hard and creating a pumping effect every time the kick was happening and so um but I mean, you know, that's like a small thing. The, the, the more important thing is that the vibe was on point. Um, very, very different from the first one, which I also yeah. just love the fact that like two such good submissions occurred that were completely different from one another. It's just like, you know, great creativity. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, not, 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 not too much feedback beyond that, I would say. Awesome. About this one for sure. Yeah, I think that's indicative of what's to come. Uh, shout out to Wino. Just just to say, like we're going to have a bunch of different uh, styles here, and that's what's exciting about this, for real. I also have a very important update from the chat. Our very own John Selway has flipped the sample, if you can believe it. Oh. But I think what we'll do exciting. is we're going to go still go through the entries in order, and we'll save John's for the end as like a big T. So you all have to stick around if you want to hear John Selway's uh, entry, even though it's in Discord and you could go listen to it like in another tab, but you're not going to do that. You're going to wait <laughs> in suspense with all of us. Yes. Uh, let's keep things rolling. Our next entry is from our friend Powell, Sax Max. And they give us a bunch of different notes that we can kind of uh, talk about maybe after we give a listen, but it's a SoundCloud link. Can I play it right from in here? I can. Amazing. All right, so playing Powell, Powell K2 on SoundCloud, playing the entry in three, two, one. Another completely different approach. If R2D2 
dude fell off the uh, ship in mid space. Where are you? Wow. It, it all culminated there at the wow. end, for sure. <laughs> um, I'll just read off some of the notes that Powell put in the Discord. Bass from the Max Sack sample made with Sampler. The Clave synth from Ooh, OU at the end of Max Sack sample uh, made with Sampler. Oh, okay. So it seems like there's lots of use. The distortion noises from the Max sample. Distortion pedal, swimming delay. The hat from the Max Sax sample made with sampler. Sax patch. Wow. In pigments, just like you, never cheaty gold. Um, nice. It just seems like a lot of these sounds came from the Max Sax sample. So props to you, Powell, for getting this sample in a bunch of different ways, contorting it. I think you said in the last track, Dustin, abusing the sample. I think we can safely yeah. say the uh, sample was used and abused in this one for sure. Definitely. Not necessarily. Yeah, no, the last, one. compared to the last, the last track was like being lovey dovey with the sample compared yes. to this one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, th this was a, obviously a different take. They got that 8 bit vibe, um, which is pretty cool. And it's a very unique take on the, on the sample. I, you know, I, I always think. Sometimes when I do a similar like sample challenge, I try to fit, I try to uh, mold what I'm doing based on what the sample is. And I think the the real trick is to try to get the sample to fit in whatever music you already make. Like what what is your style? And it seems like Powell, uh, I would assume that maybe you make some of this type of music a lot because uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have imagined taking the sample and turning it into this kind of 8-bit spacey sci-fi adventure ride uh, that you turned it into, for sure. Uh, but why don't we start with Justin this time around. Justin, what do you have for feedback on this track? For sure. Um, yeah, first and foremost, I liked how creative you got with making this saxophone into something that sounded nothing like a saxophone. Yeah. Um, that was cool. I guess... I guess... App, just like to, to the point of what the challenge is, I would have liked to have heard the saxophone, the fact that it was the saxophone a little bit more rather than a completely mangled version of it. Um, but I think the track came into its into its own the most when you started changing the the, the pitch between the samples, you know, in, in the yeah. in simpler. And I went, ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Oh, that was really cool. I really liked that. And to that end, I also thought that that could have been louder and that there was a nice chord thing happening under it, which were artfully chosen. I thought those could have been much louder. And uh, I would have loved, I would have liked to just have heard a little bit more emphasis in terms of just pure volume on, on the, the saxophone components. But again, really awesome how creative it was. Um, and, you know, I, would never have expected that to come out of a saxophone sample flip. Yeah, totally. So. Nefertiti, take it away. Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, changing the pitch of the the sax. Kind of kept me on the edge of my seat because it's the entire time I'm like I'm wondering where this track is going, and it's kind of like keeping me engaged as if it's kind of like a movie. Like you don't know what the plot. Is, like you don't know what's happening in the plot right you're so invested it just keeps in, getting like, tighter and tighter like it gets yeah uh, yeah it just keeps transforming the whole entire time mm -hmm. right up until the end and yeah i i just i thought that was exciting and the energy was just up the whole time like i, I couldn't stop moving totally can't agree more on that like building tension throughout like that that was really dope powell thank you so much for that entry that was really fantastic i don't even know what we're gonna get next because these first three have been so wildly different, so I can only expect that this next one will be some type of opera or opera. something. Oh, actually, we have a little bit of a hint here. So next entry is by Andre Von Zark, who says, for this song, I did an 8-bit hard techno song, and I'll read some of the notes after we give it a listen. And this one is on YouTube, and... 
Let me go ahead and bring that volume up and let's give it a listen. Three, two, one. This is the evil version of the Max Sack sample. Final boss. Inches of time, I'm gonna let this play under, let the rest play under our feedback for this one. Um, I'll read off uh, some of Andre's notes here. Uh, used the max sample in some areas, I used it completely, and on some parts, I, th I threw it on sampler and created new instruments with the individual bits and pieces of the sample, and the bass and drums and everything else were sound designed by me. That's great. So you got into your own sound design and stuff. That's amazing. A, a, a different take for sure. You know, we had a little bit of 8-bit feel last time. This one, that dark techno vibe, which I think is very cool. I said final boss at the beginning because this is the first one that's given that like a darkness to this sample that I, otherwise I would have interpreted as a like, kind of cheerful. And on that note, my piece of feedback is I think the sample works the best in the track when it's cut into smaller little chops. When the when longer phrases were playing out, I felt like the the rhythm wasn't grooving or locking in for me. But in places where it was chopped into smaller little incidental pieces, it felt like it made more sense in the track. Um, but I can get behind a, a dark techno track any day for sure. Uh, Justin, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? Um. I love how, like, in the beginning, it felt like there was a sort of, like, I don't know if, if this will make sense to people, but, like, out jazz kind of feeling to sure. it, you know? So where there's a style of, you know, jazz called playing out, which basically just means, like, you're going total kind of chaos, discordant, yeah. dissident mode, which which can be appealing at times. Um, I think, I, I thought it was, like, very Nina Kravitz, uh, like, her label Trip. I could see them putting out something like this. <laughs> I heard some influence on that there. I think like my main piece of feedback here is that um, 
at least her, of how I'm judging these and how I'm going to be judging these, is like, I think this track could have existed perfectly fine without the sax sample. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. so like, it was cool that it was incorporated, but for me, it felt too much like it was just like an afterthought to the production as opposed to the central focus of it. Now, with that being said, uh, the kick is insane. I love it. <laughs> and that reverb distortion sound down the middle that sounds like a, like the zombies are coming alarm or something. Yeah. That was super cool. But yeah, again, like I just think that at least for, for me with what this challenge is, I would have I wanted to hear a little bit more of like the saxophone being the basis of the track, you know? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I can, well I can definitely agree. Yeah, definitely well produced. Um, I felt like uh, initially it was like there was a bit of mystery because again, I, we don't know where these tracks are going at this point. And I really enjoy like the use of like the stereo field and just having things pinging back and forth. But I definitely agree like to an extent with Justin that like this track could have existed without the sax sample and it was kind of just in there to be in there but not really like creating like a purpose for itself so it was sure. just kind of like it was like third wheeling it you know everybody else is having fun and then like here comes this <laughs> and then guy, the sax you know? shows up yeah <laughs> and then the sax shows up yeah cool but hey nonetheless andre von zark thank you for this entry it's totally unique um i really did feel like i was in a microwave for part of it it's just that that, that low ominous like pad thing that oh, was yeah, happening. Oh yeah, that part where it's like, like panning. Going back and forth. Yeah, I felt like yeah. I was spinning, you know. All right, thank you, Andre Von Zark, for that entry. I really appreciate it. And before we go on to the next track, I want to say thank you to everybody who's hanging out in chat and and sharing their feedback and their thoughts and hyping up all the artists. So Drunk Bishop in there, Powell, Max Wild, of course, Karma Toast, Karma Toast. That's a great name, am I right? Uh, oh, Drunk. Bishop. Yeah. Dial. <laughs> I didn't hear that last syllable. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk Bishop. Um, Mr. Ferretier. I had to look at my screen. I'm like, who was in the chat? <laughs> Samuel Messiah. Um, I'm sorry if I missed anybody's name. I'm just looking at this first page here. Pendulce, Sarmed, everybody. Thank you for being in the chat. Thank you for um, giving some feedback and just hyping up the artists and everything. If you hear something you like, please head to these artist pages. Give them a follow. And if you're not yet, make sure you join our Discord so you can connect with uh, everybody over there music bloxians hello nice to see you all right let's keep it rolling here's my entry oh this is from janelle here's my entry to the max sample challenge use the sample as is change it a bit uh change the order a bit all right let's just get into listening and i'll read those notes after janelle costa on youtube here we go I'll play from the beginning um three two one That was like you know I like 80s. It. Oh, more you vocals. from the end of the sample. I forgot that. Yes. Yeah. Wow. A lot of really cohesive elements in that one for sure. And I especially liked that switch up uh, in feel. I want to just read the, the notes really quick. Uh, used the sax sample as is, changed it, a, changed the order a bit, also chopped it into sampler and created a new part, gave it a Latin flair with a slow uh, reggaeton. Yes, that was very, very effective. This one for me, similar to the Falguna track, in that I thought Falguna's track like 
uh, if I had just heard the track on its own, I wouldn't have imagined that they got the sax sample from somewhere else. It sounds very intentional. In this track, too, I think the sax sounds like an intentional part of the piece for sure. And all the elements came together in a really nice way. I really love the vocals and the vocal samples. I'm curious to know, um, Janelle, if you're in the chat, let us know if those were your vocals or if they were samples. Uh, both are valid. I'm just curious. Um, and I thought that this track was really cool. Could have been could have been longer. Make this into a full track for sure. I think some uh, some more vocals on it, get another vocalist or rapper even, and it could do really well. A nice use of the sample for sure. Nefertiti, what did you think of this track? Um, I enjoyed it. I like I like Latin music. Like my family's from the Caribbean, so like Latin music is just kind of part of like the 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 music that we we grew up on. So. Sure. It's it's kind of like listening to home, so I really enjoyed that. The only thing um, I would say is that I felt like the drums could have came through a little bit more, so I could like kind of really feel like the, the 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 rhythm aspect of it. Yeah, and I felt like the the sax fit in just finally. I felt like that could have easily been like a Latin jazz band easily. Nice, Justin. What do you think? Um, yeah, I love the Latin feel. Huge fan. Um, I wanted. <laughs> this is gonna be funny. <laughs> I have the opposite comment that I had on the last last one, which is it was too reliant on the saxophone. Ah. Uh, I liked the vocals; they sounded nice. I guess the this is I guess this is something just food for thought for anyone in the chat that that um, participated in the challenge or that didn't participate in the challenge and is just here to soak it all in. Um, whenever you're using a lead instrument, right, regardless of whether it's a sample or it's something that you're playing. One of the most important things to do is to ask yourself, what story is the lead telling emotionally, right? Um, because the thing is, is that there is a motif in what Max is playing. Uh, and so I think the key is to try to locate the motif and bring that out the most. And so I think the only thing that I, I would criticize, quote unquote, with this, with the, the musical composition of this one is that I think maybe it, it it could have paid a little more attention to what the sample was asking for itself energetically. Um, but I thought that the the drum production on a purely rhythmic level, I really enjoyed. And um, the, the musical sensibility was there very much. So yeah. yeah, for sure. And uh, Janelle is in chat. So that's great. Hello, Janelle. Thank you for joining us. Says the vocals yeah, were also job, samples. Sample, sampling is cool because you just take all these puzzle pieces from different puzzles and you put them together and you make something beautiful. I think that that's really cool. Yeah. I would love to hear more in this style for sure, Janelle. Thank you so much for the submission. Really well done. Man, this community is great. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. There's so Absolutely. there's just like a ton. Enjoying the variety so far. It is like, quite the variety. We haven't really had anything the same back to back at all. Yeah, and I, I want to thank uh, John Selway again in chat because John uh, jumped in and gave Andre because John, of course, known for uh, his techno, was giving Andre some uh, good, oh, awesome. good notes in the chat. So that's great, fantastic. Um, did you know that John Selway teaches? at 343 Labs, and you can learn directly from him. Same with our friend, Justin Beck. They literally teach at the school. You can take classes from the masters themselves. 343labs.com. Oh, Nefertiti, you took classes. Which classes did you take? I At this point, I've pretty much taken all of them. Wow, like, that's I'm amazing. In, I'm in Selway's class now. Uh, see, and you but, heard- But she told me that she got the most out of mine. Just oh, is that true? <laughs> Interesting, good to know. Um, yeah, that that is awesome. And you heard Nefertiti's entry at the top of the stream, so you know how much fire you can make after you take some three four three labs classes. So, oh man, just think about so it. So much fire. Doesn't matter where you are. Take <laughs> classes online. All right, let's keep rolling. Enough plugging here. Um, we got Rashane, aka Copacetic Kid. Oh, what's up, Rashane? Heck yeah. Hey, so let's get this entry rolling. Max sax through. Okay, I want to say before we do this too, the woo comes from the end of the sax sample for anybody who doesn't know or anybody like me who just mm -hmm. like forgot that. So I think people have been using that in cool ways, but I only just realized during the last one that it was part of the original sample. So that's cool. All right, we got City Vibes Gritty Boom Bap. Well, I'm stoked to hear it. Copacetic City Kid. Vibe, let's give it a listen. D21.
what's up back here at beats thanks for tuning in cool vocals Yeah, nice. Those vocals were definitely the highlight uh, for me. Those definitely like woke me up a, a little bit once we got to them about a minute in. So those were fire addition to the track. I like what you did with the field recording as well to kind of set the mood and the tone. It does have a slightly dark vibe, but I think maybe some things could have been done to the sample or maybe some of the other instruments too. add a little bit of space, you know, a little bit of some type of reverb, a shorter reverb maybe to give me... I don't know, the sax sample seemed a little dry. And I'll also say the rhythm wasn't locking for me at all times with the sample. It wasn't, yeah, wasn't locking totally with the backbeat. So obviously you can, I just feel like you were going for more of a swung boom bap vibe. And I don't think the sample is necessarily straight, but it was coming across as straight when it was put against this groove. So I would have chopped it into just finer pieces or like warped it a little bit differently. Um, uh, while including it in this track, but there's something here for sure And I definitely feel the mood and the vibe dark gritty because the city like album art and stuff I, I feel that for sure, but um, Justin do you want to go into more of your thoughts here? Sure um, Yeah, I had, the, I had the same reaction with the sax uh, in terms of rhythm like the I think the downbeat wasn't quite landing where it needed to uh, however that was only at certain moments. I liked how it was in, how it was off at other times. Actually, um, it was just the bah, 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 bah. that part just wasn't coming in the right spot. Right. But the other parts I thought actually were, were, were nice. It actually changed my perception of the rhythm of the sax, which is cool. Mm. Um, the my, my main thing that I would say here, Rashane, is take away the sax sample and make a whole track around those vocals. Cause that shit is honestly very good. Yeah. Very, very good. I was like, whoa, that's a hook. Um, so, you know, from personal experience, there's a lot to be said for doing the sample challenge or trying to sample something. And then you end up building a track around it. That's just super inspiring and just lose yeah. the sample. And like, this was a great exercise for you. Cause you made a great song. Totally. So I would say, Definitely get back in there and work on that. That's that's worth keeping and continuing to work on. Fantastic. Really, like that tickled my emotions. That that vocal, yeah, big time. That's super good advice. Yeah, Nefertiti, go ahead. Yeah, I feel the same way. I felt like it, it it is one of those tracks where the sample could have been like left out, and the track itself would be like a good, like solid, uh, like starting point. And then I really like the um, like the atmospheric sound design because there was a couple times I almost took off my headphones to see if somebody was like at the door or something. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I'm hearing. <laughs> and then like I realized that it's just like incorporated in the song, and I really like that it creates uh, an environment and an image to go with the music that's playing. For sure. I'm a big fan of that too. Like kind of setting the scene, transporting your listener, that sort of thing. I want to ask one question of the judges. That last chord, what do you all think of the last chord of the song? Because it doesn't Let end. Let me go back and check it. Let me go back and check it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Just go listen to the like how the song kind of resolves. I'm going to play it for the stream. I just wanted one more cycle of the progression. Uh, you know? Uh. <laughs> That's yeah, like, I, I have, I know what you mean. I think there's like, I think it's like oh. almost like a religious thing. People that end on the root chord and people that don't. Yeah, you know? totally. I always get, me personally, I'm always like, why didn't you end on the root? But, <laughs> but I know a lot of people like to not do that. So, I, yeah. Keeps us wanting yeah, more. Yeah, there's also a, a creative aspect to it. Because I think for, I think it's Mac Miller for Circles, the last song doesn't resolve but if you repeat it to the first track the first track starting chord resolves it so it creates 
the Genius. Circle. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, mind blown. <laughs> yeah. Um, Copacetic Kid, thank you so much for that entry. We really appreciate it. Nice work. Yeah, definitely. Let's keep it rolling. I don't even know how many more uh, entries we have. Quite a few. One, two, three, yeah, four. Yeah, we have a good chunk. Yeah, I'm just going to step five. away and uh, run to the bathroom. I'll be back in 30 seconds. You got it. Wow, that's fast. Well, why don't we take a moment here before we listen to the next one from Gabriel or Gabrielle. I apologize. I'm unsure. Um, and say hello to everybody who's in chat. Thank you for joining us on this sample challenge today. My name is Tejo. We got Nefertiti Gold in. Justin Beck, who is a uh, 343 Labs instructor, just ran to the bathroom. And we are here uh, reviewing entries for the 343 Labs sample challenge. Everybody took this sample, uh, sax sample from our dear leader, Max Wild, and flipped it into something cool. So far, so good. I mean, we've had such a variety of entries, so that's cool. Accurate says, I'll join the next one. Cool project. I'll I'll shout out Accurate really quick. Accurate is doing this really cool series where he's basically making an album on stream. Was working with the Machina Plus the other day and I was watching. Really cool stream, Accurate. Um, but thank you for coming in and saying hello. Just so you all know, we are brought to you by 343 Labs, an electronic music school based in New York, Berlin, and online. You can take classes um, in person or online, no matter where you are in the world. Nefertiti has taken lots of classes. Have you done in person and online? I've only done online. Cause you know, how is that oh. learning that way? Um, at the time it's been pretty good because it's, it allows me to be really flexible with like my schedule. Sure. Cause since I don't live in the city, it just kind of creates, it, mm -hmm. it makes it easier for me to like attend classes. But, um, I, I don't feel like it's taken away from what I, what I've learned. If anything, I've had to learn a whole lot more because you know, you got to get all the video totally. cameras set up and for Zoom sure is always a problem. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, all right, Justin is back. We're going to jump into the next entry. Um, this is a Gabriel? Gabriel, yes. Overcoded segmentarity. I'll read those notes after we give it a listen, and I will hit play in... This description is incredible. I can't wait to read it. Three, two, one. This one's seven minutes long, so I can't promise we'll listen to the whole thing, but we'll get through the... Uh, a bit of it, and then we'll do our feedback. Uh, Gabriel, if you're in chat, say hi. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Ricardo Villalobos vibes so far. Yeah, what Justin said. immediately makes me want to watch the matrix and then drunk, drunk bishop said reminds me of the matrix okay people are having the same thought
cautious of time, even though I'm certain there are some fun things coming in this track and it should be consumed as its whole self. Um, I want to just quickly read the, uh, the description. The track tries to encapsulate the zeitgeist of a disrupted city in the grips of a rapacious white collar mob. Under its constant pressure, a wailing saxophone pervades repetitively the few desperate notes of waning humanity. What a mood. Cinematic indeed. And a few people in chat were calling out like the cinematic nature of this track. I wonder why, because this isn't your typical like cinematic track, like there's no orchestral strings or something like that. So it's so interesting. And then people were calling out the matrix that people start to associate this type of music with being cinematic as well. I think it just gets associated with like action, sci-fi, um, that sort of thing. So that's, that's really cool. For me, it evoked the born identity type vibes for sure. You know, I was just going to say it reminded me of Moby. Yeah. So like it was, it was all his music was in more identity. Yeah. I wonder, uh, Justin, what genre is this? What genre would you call this? It's just techno. This is like almost electro in a sense, but yeah, it is tagged. Yeah. They did tag it electro. So that was, oh, definitely, they did? yeah, oh, that okay. was definitely, well, well, they tagged it electro three, four, three labs, max, uh, sax, and then capitalism and schizophrenia. So take that as you <laughs> oh, will. Wow, nice. I think that fits really well. But yeah, this track is adventurous. And it's another one of these like takes on the sample that I would not have expected. I think the sample also crept in at the beginning where I didn't even realize I was hearing the sample at first. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh wait, that's the sax sample bouncing between my ears, you know? So that that was really cool. But I'm curious, uh, Nefertiti Gold, do you want to give some feedback for this track? Oh yeah, definitely. I felt like as soon as it started, I was like transported into like a completely different world. Um, I wasn't looking at the chat, but as soon as uh, you said that somebody said it was like the matrix, it was like, boom, I automatically saw mm -hmm. the scene. They're on the computer. They're like coding all the green zeros mm -hmm. and ones are just like falling down the screen. Um, I think if anybody calls your track cinematic or that they can see it in a movie, I think it's one of the best compliments you can get because it has a place in this world and you don't always have to be so quote unquote traditional with how you choose to make your music and totally. there's always a place where it can fit. And I just like how the sax sample was like totally transformed where by the time you realized it was being used, it was kind of already like dissipating into yeah. space. And for I sure. thought it fit well the way that it was transformed. I thought it really fit well for what was created. Yeah, especially it being like the only acoustic instrument, I think, that I'm actually hearing in the track. And I, I'll, before you go into yours, Justin, I will say, when I asked what genre is this, uh, John Salway chimed in and said electro. And then immediately after, Max Wilde jumped in and said IDM. So I'll let you take the floor now. Oh, yeah, genres are unimportant. Genre know? wars. It's, yeah, yeah, but... Um... What I will say is this, it reminded me of uh, initially Ricardo Villalobos, as I commented, but then really who it reminded me of more than anything, and I wonder if John also would think this, is uh, Alva Noto, um, who is someone that worked with Ryuchi Sakamoto quite a bit, uh, as a really, really artful um, electronic musician. Uh, I, I thought the... I, yeah, I mean... <laughs> The, the sax was used in a really cool way. The drum programming was amazing. The the sound design was really was really like ear catching or whatever you would call it. Um, I think the my my honest take on it is that the sax was slightly out of tune at certain moments in time, mm. um, and I and that was also the case for I think the other techno ish ones too, which is ironic because there is the least amount of harmonic activity happening in those. But that being said, it's not like it was therefore bad. Uh, I thought it was really cool and really good. Um, and the production skill level on show was was very good. Um, my favorite part was when the saxophone sample seemed to go to some sort of granular delay mm. or or loop yeah. delay and it would stutter. And I was like, that's really cool. Like that's, that's super creative. So, I mean, one broader kind of observation again to take a macro step back right just about sampling and 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 challenges or um constraints like this so to speak is like one thing that i learned over the years you know is when i first was producing i was i was huge into techno and house and electronic music and i would always try to um, force things into that format and I think there's what I can I, what I can say as someone who also makes many other styles of music at this point and, and 
doesn't really focus necessarily on those styles as much, but for did for such a long time. What I can say is that if you try to force yourself to work in a different format, you're going to learn a lot totally really quickly that you can then apply back to your preferred uh, stylistic medium. So I would, I would purely say that, uh, and it's not like I'm knocking the creativity because the creativity on show has been awesome all around. Like every single one I've been like, this is dope. And this is really cool. I would never think to do this. Um, but I just, I guess just like, just a side thought is, you know, sometimes instead of trying to force something to be what you want it to be, maybe adapt to what it wants you to do to it, you know, sure. in a certain sense. Ooh. So just a thought. Yeah. Great feedback. It's a big part of being a, mu a musician, you know, it's like, is, is hearing what needs to be done as opposed to trying to force something to be done. Yeah. Totally. And I'll read, uh, John had some feedback in chat, said great energy and vibe, good sound design and mix could use some more contrast and arrangement and some musical development. Some parts seem out of tonal center, if not out of. Yeah. So kind of similar feedback to what you were saying, Justin. Great. Well, Gabriel, thank you so much for that entry. I really appreciate it. That was, uh, you know, yet again, keeping us guessing with what kind of music we're hearing today, which is amazing. I'm just waiting for the death metal, dude. For sure. I, maybe it's coming up. Who can say? All right. Uh, could this be the one from uh, Yijit Khan? <laughs> Yijit Khan? Is that how I say that? Um, I found out about this challenge today and tried to make something. Oh, this this came in, uh, what was it, yesterday or two days ago? So very... Uh, yeah, like two days ago. Slightly late entry, but exciting. There's some notes with the track, which I will read after we give it a listen. All right, here we go. Out of Sound, it's called. Let's listen in three, two, one. Right in. Getting stimming vibes right away. Mm. I think the atmosphere is made from the saxophone, no? Oh, it does seem that way. That was a great track. You know, I really love the, uh, I think you were right, Justin, actually. Let me jump back to the notes for the track. Um, I used the sample to create four different layers of atmospheric texture by using Ableton Live's Max for Live device, Granulator, and Grain Freeze also added some effects. The melodic element is made by Wavetable with just small parts of the sample as a sound wave, and the other parts, uh, sax parts, I've used Granulator. I really like the frenetic little chops of the sax sample that were really obvious, and then I like that you also made this kind of unobvious um, atmosphere out of that sex symbol that was a vibe um i really love some of the transition sounds too those like caught my yeah. ear for sure um 
one piece of critical feedback would be I say there could be some type of uh, contrasting section in here or some type of B section, some a little more development uh, divergence from the that that main hook and groove of the track or something. Just one more sonic element that could have come maybe halfway, three quarters of the way through to give us a little taste of something uh, new. But it's a nice little short track. I really loved your use of the sample and I was feeling it for sure. It's got this nice nature album art, which I think is pretty good and evocative of the sound that you were going for. So well done with that. It seems like you were executing on uh, this vision pretty successfully. Um, I've been alternating. I don't remember who goes first this time. Nefertiti Gold. Nefertiti, go, yeah. <laughs> um, I definitely really enjoy like the the granular sound. I like I just like the fact that the the way that the sax sample was used just to create something yeah. really new and different that you wouldn't have guessed was, you know, so, like a sax sample or, or just something outside of that. You would just think that like just sound design, get your synthesis out and throw some effects on it and go about it that way. The transitional sounds are really, those really caught my my ear. I was about to say my eye, but it's <laughs> caught my ear. Yeah. And uh, just the way that it, it just quickly just like whoosh, that was really cool. For sure. And uh, like you said, like a B section would have been really cool to have that transitional sound and then go into like Something uh, new. a different section of, of the song. For sure. Justin, what'd you think? Um... I really like this one. Uh, I, I'm i gonna give some very sharp feedback on this one because I actually really like it. I think and that's what happens though. When we really like a track or we feel like an artist like did really well, we want to give them a little bit like harsher like feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna like be very, very to the point on some of these. I think that to put it bluntly, the percussion loop that comes in after 30 seconds or whatever kind of ruins it interesting because it's so fucking chill and vibey otherwise mm. and that thing is just demanding so much attention from my ear and it's so active rhythmically and i was just imagining in my brain i was like if that sound wasn't there i'd still be completely satisfied in terms of activity sure you know? like um so i think that was just one thing that i was like i think this probably might have been my favorite one actually if that if that sound hadn't been there um, do you think that the there would be a way to achieve that kind of like rolling groove with different sounds that might not make you think absolutely, that? Absolutely, yeah. Yes, definitely. So like, I think that one thing that's important to always keep in mind with percussive programming, or, you know, just if you're playing as well, is just like, what what is the most active rhythm and what frequency is it in? And the thing is, is that there is a lot of ambient rhythmic kind of stuff happening in the higher frequencies already. So it just made it very busy and hard to focus on. So if that type of active thing had happened and maybe a sound that was like, Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some shit like that, I think it would have really blocked it in a little bit more or at least made it fit. Um, I think that like the droney sax element in general was so evocative. Like I personally am a huge sucker for styles of music and songs that take one note or one chord and literally just sustain it the whole time and work around that, right? Because it creates this really incredible kind of counter harmonization that's permanently occurring, you know? And like, whenever you arrive back at, at, the, at home, so to speak, harmonically, it's like really especially like feels good. Um, so that was super strong. If anything could have been even leaned into harder. And then I just thought that the baseline, um, tried to do too much hmm. melodically. I think if it had just been literally two alternating notes or three alternating notes, there was a moment where it went to a distinctly minor note that felt like it was, um, it broke the spell a little bit. It was either felt like it was a minor third or a minor six or something like where it just suddenly it was like, oh, now we're dark. Yeah. But the thing is that otherwise it felt like very floaty and ethereal. We know? didn't build to that. Yeah, yeah. So maybe later in the song you bring that note in or something. But I think for the majority of it, I wanted to feel like I was floating along. I didn't want to feel like that that tension that was brought up through that. Again, sure. no, that's just a personal taste. Like there's no right or wrong way to create harmony. Right. Yeah. All right, y Yijit Can. Thank you so much for that entry. Really appreciate it. One of my favorites of the night for sure. I want to also shout out uh, Lex Lucid in the chat. Thank you so much for becoming a channel member, VIP member, um, VIP members of the channel. Get free Tatro sample pack. So. Thank you for doing that. All right, let's keep moving. 
Per Lemming is our next. Oh, and Per Lemming says, very nervous about this, as this is the first real thing I've ever made public. Very interesting. Wow. Awesome. Congrats, deal. man. Yeah. That's that's huge. Great. This is just a start. Yeah, and it's a great way. Like, if you can be fearless like that, continue to be fearless like that. People take oh, yeah. notes from this for sure. Just put it out there because that's the only way you're going to get feedback and get out of your own head because some of your own feedback is certainly valid. But when you hear it echoed from an outside voice, then you for sure know it's valid. And then you can you sort of lose some of the insecurities, you know, because you start like yeah. getting some solid advice, you know. But nonetheless, uh, let's give Per Lemming Wittis a listen here we go three two one go oh that is a cool sound First track to have made public, absolute fire for sure. And I think Drunk Bishop yes. in the chat said it best, said something like, this is the first one you made public. What other goodies you hiding in them folders, man? For <laughs> sure. Yes, that. Um, there was a certain warmth to this track and this mix that I really enjoyed. Uh, I, I can't really pinpoint it, but there was definitely warmth there. Um, the, the chops themselves were great chops of the sample. Um, I, and there was just certain sounds that would come in here and there. There's that talk boxy kind of like synth that came or like three quarters of the way through. That yeah, was that just, one, I think you might've heard me. I literally went, whoa. Yeah, that was just like <laughs> ear candy. And it wasn't like, like sometimes you introduce new sounds and there's some sounds in this, like there's some synth stuff, some acoustic bass stuff. Um, they blend all blend together so well. Nothing seemed like it didn't belong in the track. and. And even though they came from such different sources, I, I think my one piece of critical feedback, and this is something that I tend to do, or I probably did it a bit when I flipped the sample, is the sample is the focal point the entire track for the most part. Um, and I think sometimes when we're doing a sample challenge, we get caught up in that. Um, 
but we could have given the sample a break for certain moments and maybe let something else take the lead. Even though the way you chopped the sample was great, I could see a listener perceiving it as being a little bit too repetitive, but I think um, the specific chops that you chose and the phrases that you made from chopping up the sample were actually quite good, but maybe we could have uh, taken a break from the sample at some point in the track, given another, uh, giving either the groove a chance to just shine by itself with no melody or introducing a new melodic element that could take center stage, something like that. Just, just my thoughts. But Justin, why don't you take it away for this track? Was Am I right to say like this track feels warm? Oh yeah. I pretty much agree with everything you said. Um, I, I, yeah, the phrasing on the sampling was awesome. Yeah. It was cool. It was really creative. Yeah. Remind me of Pretty Lights a lot. Sure. Um, yeah, which is definitely a high compliment. Uh, I thought that, yeah, the sound was noticeably, I don't want to say use the word better, but more advanced than yeah. some of the other uh, tracks, which took me off guard because you said it's the first thing you've ever put out right. publicly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was like actually very transparent. Like I didn't hear like noticeable resonances that were out of whack and EQing or like over compression or anything, which was, I was like, damn, it sounds super open, like, and deep as well. Very three dimensional, very gooey, yeah. a lot of color. Uh, I think, yeah, my like really only two pieces of feedback at all would be, uh, or critique would be the sample was, was overused. Uh, the piano out wide was super subtle but gorgeous yeah and like in terms of the musicality of it and i think that's what i would have maybe had taken a moment apropos to your, your observation to do would be to like take away the sax let the piano shine for 15 30 seconds whatever maybe even take away a beat a little let it wander around and then boom smack right back in yeah and then also i thought the shaker that came in um like too wet no sure. too much sustain on it like so to speak rhythmically um but yeah, that was, um, if I showed you the first thing I ever made or ever <laughs> made public, it doesn't sound anything close to that. So, I mean, dude, you got, I hope you continue to release things and share things because that was very good. Yes. Per Lemming, I know you're in the chat, so maybe share a couple like mixing or mastering stuff that you had going on. Any plugins you might use or techniques you might use. Let us know in the chat, share your secrets, but never TD gold. What did you yeah, think of definitely. this track? Um, I felt like it had a very old school hip hop sound that yeah. just kind of like, it's just it's felt it's like, like childhood, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I do feel the same about, you know, uh, letting some other parts of the, the song, uh, shine through because in my mind, like I'm hearing hip hop and I can also hear somebody on it. So sure. I would, I would have loved to hear some instruments even just drop out and kind of let it breathe for a little bit and then come back in. Uh, the piano, I, I wanted to hear so much more of it. I just felt like it came in and it was adding like this this extra layer of curiosity. And it's just like, I felt like I didn't really get a chance to really enjoy that. Um, and I felt like the the drum programming could have had a, just a little bit of uh, variety because sometimes it did felt like it was uh, pretty repetitive. But again, if, uh, if you had dropped out the instruments every once in a while, like that would have instantly fixed it. Yeah but it's i loved it for sure fantastic entry can't can't stress enough per lemming with us time yeah first, seriously no that was, that was really really strong yeah first oh thing God. putting out there fantastic work my friend all about the sex love that let's keep it rolling we have it seems two more entries to go so we're in the home stretch here this one wins for artwork for sure and i did steal this artwork for the <laughs> thumbnail I hope you all are noticing that not only does Max have sunglasses, but the sax is also wearing sunglasses. Oh, wow. I didn't notice that, actually. <laughs> That's... The that double sunglasses. Sunglasses. <laughs> this is from Samuel Masai, a very active member of the community, young man, 14, from the UAE. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, always doing different stuff, always participating in stuff like this. So uh, He's 14? 14, yes. Oh, Samuel's 14. He's yeah, he's always hanging out in the chats. Exactly. Oh, yes, dude. Young but that's ambitious fella. I love it. Sure. I love it. I love it. All right. So um I'll read the notes after this, but it's titled Funny Sax. So take with that what you will. Here we go. I'm excited. Are you going? Ooh. Yeah, oh yeah, we're going. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Oh. 
I love just the initial loop that was made from the sax. We really took the woo for a spin here. Yep, we've switched. That was fun. All right. I know you guys are still going, I think, but that was really fun. And I was going to say like some kind of like old cartoon almost kind of vibe, but then a, a common beats, I think said, yes, like Mario. the avalanches, right? I don't know what that is. The, the band. Oh, the avalanche is the band. I was thinking cartoon. Yeah, no, no, no. I was thinking yeah, it I was sounded thinking like it like, could have been like, like the core loop of like when an of an avalanche is song. Right. And that boy needs therapy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Common Beats said uh, Mario Kart remix vibes. I could definitely feel that too. Some N64 vibes. It, it was fun. It's a minute long track that takes a couple twists and turns yeah. and definitely kept me guessing for sure. Like I said, I really like that initial loop. Dun, 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 dun. It almost sounds like a like the kind of horn you put on your bicycle that you like squeeze the ball and it like that's what yeah. it reminds me of that motion um i thought that that was really cool the drums were lacking a bit the drums need some oomph for, for sure um but i think in the end samuel was just having a good time with this track for sure and it's definitely different than anything we've heard today uh read the caption i made the loop from putting a sample uh of the sample putting a sample of the sampler into simpler. I don't even know what that sentence is. I made the bass from the longest sustained note I could find the sample and the vocal thing from Max's celebratory woo at the end. People love the woo. The woo is a great touch. Yeah. I wonder if Max intended uh, if he thought when he I did that. I think he just got really excited that he played the <laughs> yeah. whole thing without making a mistake Yeah, after exactly. 26 takes. No, <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nefertiti, what did you think of this track? <laughs> Um, I thought it was really funky and I had like a really nice groove. Like I, I, I just, it, and then it, it went immediately into it. So like, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, I would say that the, the B section that came in was really sudden to a point where I thought like my computer kind of like messed up a little <laughs> bit. So I had to like look up to make sure that like I didn't accidentally click anything. Um, maybe just like a smoother or more of a, like, maybe like a like a tape slowdown effect sure, to, yeah. to switch into sections. I think that would have uh, that would have been dope too. But other than that, I'm like each section was was good, but like put together, I think it could have transitioned a little bit uh, more seamlessly. For sure, there is something to say about uh, building towards your transitions and things like that. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Justin, what do you think? Um, I'm gonna make a bold comment here and say that I think that that one was the most creative usage of the sample i, of what I we've think heard so far i think that's not crazy i think that's a yeah. good assessment i i think that like I'm, I'm glad that i know that you're 14 because that actually makes a lot of sense now if you haven't heard that like that <laughs> sounds like something a 14 year old would make i mean that in the best way possible right like yeah. uh you there was no you weren't held back by any consideration of genre or style or anything like that, that yeah. was just pure creative expression I loved You're it fun. so much in that respect. Sure, the drums could have been louder. Some of the transitions were a little sudden, but the honest to God truth, man, is that if you're on here, Samuel, I'd say uh, keep doing exactly what you're doing. Keep having fun making music because you clearly have a great creative brain for this. And I think that uh, if you're only 14 years old, I can't even wait to hear what you're making when you're 18. Yes, I, oh I, God. I say that because Samuel is a part of like the community over on my channel as well. Ooh. And he's always submitting music. And uh, that's why I say all the time. I'm like, bro, if I could make some if I was this like dedicated and making like music like this when I was 14, like I can't imagine where I'd be now. So like bright future ahead for sure. And Samuel is not currently in the chat because he is in a different ah. time zone. But I am sure he will watch this back and uh, be thankful of all that feedback. So Samuel, great entry. Thank you for that. Um, Let's all be inspired by that. I think what you said, Justin, yeah. makes a lot of sense. Like, um, 
not having any preconceived notion about genre or something and, and that youthful like excitement of just trying yeah. something new and having fun we could all learn from that for sure absolutely yeah yeah it's important to keep keep in touch with that sense of freedom absolutely yeah i was just gonna say that there's a certain amount of like freedom and like carelessness that you start to lose as you get older and you start caring too much about what other people think, and it just hinders you yeah. so much so, right yeah one I, of the I, best I, examples of an artist who is able to maintain that is a uh, thundercat sure yeah, yeah. that's a yeah. great example yeah. and that's why uh he ends up making music on like adult swim and that stuff you know yeah, exactly. <laughs> it fits that vibe all right we actually yeah. have now we have two more entries i uh skipped one that was a little wow, bit lower you've done I me seem. dirty i know <laughs> two more two more here we go um, this one has lots of notes uh with it mystic, mystic moth. moth i know i know senior scott he's on my chat he's oh, on my stream hangout oh nice more often than not. we got a regular here all right so let me bring up the sound cloud i'll count count it in this time all right yeah lots of cool notes here i'm not going to go through all of them but let's at least give a listen to the track from scott vincent here we go in Three, two, one, go. To the max. To the max. Uh, yeah. To but. the max, indeed. To the max. To the max. To the max. Oh. To the max. To the max. To the max. We're transitioning to another dimension. Oh no! Bad trip. Bad trip. Oh. Smith in chat says more woos. plays out let me just give my initial reaction i will say there's something just unsettling about there being that many maxes saying woo in my ears at the same time it's just a little unsettling <laughs> that's a joke of course um i really like the melody of this the melody um in addition to kind of the chord progression or bass line that it's following i think is a cool vibe for sure and the different uses of the sample are very cool. There's a whole list of notes here that I kind of followed along with the track. Um, it just seems like a very thoughtful approach to this challenge for sure, the way the sample was sliced and used throughout. So nice job on that, Scott Vincent. I will say there was some time at the beginning that the, the, um, uh, the sample came in a little bit overbearing, uh, not like overbearing, but like a little bit busy and kind of distracted from, I think, what the main core of the tracks melody were. Very interesting in intro. I think there's something to say about tracks that have an intro that completely departs from, well, it doesn't depart because it's the intro, but it's like you have your core idea of what your song's going to be, and then you build an intro that's sort of like different and sets it up in an interesting way. So I, th I think that's cool. 
I'll also say that the vocoder was a little weird for me in the mix too. Like that could have been uh, mixed a little bit better, but it was a cool idea and a cool approach. And I like the idea of using the phrase to the max. It's very cheeky. Uh, I think that's cool. Yeah. Justin, what do you think of the track? The intro was um, very creative. And yeah, the, the vocoder thing was a little bit funky, but also it was interesting, you know? Yeah. So I, it made me go, what are you doing there? Uh, which is always important. So um, I think that this was also a really, really creative way to create a new melody out of this out of, out of the sample. Sure. I liked that. And I liked that he kind of took advantage of the, 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 the nuances of the saxophone performance in and of itself and the way that notes transition between one another on a saxophone, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, Max plays quite pretty well because he's, he's trained. And so there were, I like that he found certain spots where there was something unique to saxophone happening that he could take advantage of, you yeah. know? Um, like, yeah, so that was really cool. Um, and yeah, the composition was, um, I thought it was quite pensive, you know? It was sure. pretty meditative. I liked it. I dug it. I was, I was a fan for sure. Nice. Nefertiti, what'd you think? Um, I think just like you guys, like the intro kind of like took me by surprise. Like, hmm? like what, what are we doing here? But as you listen to it, you get the whole picture. It, it, it comes off very intentional. And I'm just interpreting this how I hear it. I didn't even read the notes. Um, I felt like the, the intro, it just kind of threw everything at you in like one shot. And then everything came back together slowly throughout the track. And it, and it came back together in a cohesive way. Like I felt like the intro... It was like intentionally comes off a little messy, yeah, right? And to get your attention. Yep. But like it, it 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 felt like it had an intention, but you have to give it a chance to to like let you know what the intention is. I felt like it was almost like like mosaic art almost, like listening totally. to Totally. Yeah, it's yeah. like somebody because like up close, you don't really see the whole picture. You have to like zoom out. Exactly. You know? Yeah, that that's yeah. perfectly stated. Yeah. Well done. Uh thank you, Scott Vincent. Great entry here. Um, everybody is doing so great with these entries. I'm really stoked. Can't believe we're coming to an end here, though, with a final entry. And then we'll give a listen to John's, of course. Um, oh, yeah. So we have another one here Finish with tons of sound. notes. What do you all give me so much detail for? What do I need to know? Every single thing about every single sound? Oh, man. It's quite this extensive. A lot of notes. But shout out to you, my friend. Oh, my God. This is like a dissertation. <laughs> i'll say all i just kept scrolling they do say all the 14 sounds of the all the 14 sounds of the track were made using the original sample here is a brief description of how i made them so maybe we can dig into that um after oh tried to do cool. a tribute to john coltrane which is my favorite sax player cool oh, oh yeah oh and it's titled yeah. of course let's listen those giant steps here we go oh, yeah awesome let's give a listen three two one go Oh, I'm scared for our friend Full Train. Something's flying around. It's being swarmed by bees. <laughs> Nolas, if you're in the chat, say hello. Hello, thanks for joining us. Great tune so far. Whoa, what's gonna happen?
Oof. sound is so tense wow dude the ending was sick like that was it <laughs> i really like yeah. that yeah there's a lot of cool things happening in this track for one like the kick is super interesting i guess I'll, i will yeah. dive into some of these notes here because these sounds all came from the sample i guess yeah, um, let's, let's let's see how this guy built these so kick i did the kick in three layers got the same single sax note one layer is minus 36 semitones the second is minus 24 and the third is minus 12 each channel i used eq saturation uh, reverb and transient designer so they sat together as a single kick drum and for the sub they said uh, I reverse the kick and use it as a sub with some fade in and fade out on it. Interesting. Yeah. And and going into detail, if you're not a member of the Discord, uh, you should join at least. So you, if you're interested in that track, go through. You can hear or read how every single sound was made in that track. But yeah, like I said, a lot of so many interesting things happening. Not what I thought, not what I expected to hear based on the description of like, uh, I got inspired and tried to do a track as a tribute to John Coltrane, which is my favorite sax player, because it goes so far out there with the um, sample and with the approach and the in the style and genre of music that ended up getting made. And you know, I am t I'm I guess I would consider myself a simpleton when it comes to music. Like I like very simple, <laughs> diatonic, pretty music. So I don't listen to a lot of music like this. And I couldn't. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I, I couldn't. Um, I couldn't grasp the harmony of this track. Like, but I. That's not the point. And I, I wasn't bothered by that either because you've got this, the saxophone doing really interesting things and processed in a really interesting way against this solid hardcore rhythm. I don't know. It, it just worked for me. And it's a type of music. Uh, it's like slightly industrial, industrial, I would say. Um, and not what I would normally listen to, but still very cool sound and kept me interested the whole way through. But Justin, you seem to really like it. what did you think? Yeah. Um, so... This person either listens to the record label Lies all the time or needs to start listening to the record label Lies all the time. Uh, Long Island Electrical Systems, it's L.I.E.S. Check them out. Um, really sick, it's run by a guy named Ron Trent. Um, very adventurous industrial techno music kind of. And um, it reminded me very specifically of this artist named Su Sing, T-Z-U-S-I-N-G, this guy from Shanghai who makes a lot of stuff that sounds like that. Um, I thought that the sound design was incredible given the constraint, if we are to believe that he made, he, she made every sound from uh, uh, sax. The kick is crazy. Yeah. Um, also that down, 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 down. It's almost so like a plucky string. Was, that, that was so crazy. That was, I love that sound. Like I would be like, if I was out at a warehouse, I'd be, very enthusiastic about that. Um, yeah. My main, my main piece of critique is that the drop that the first drop that happens. Yep. I think he went the wrong way. He tried to decrease. They went the wrong way. They tried to decrease the energy. They should have increased the energy. Sure. And I think that that would have been the moment to go diatonic. Ah. Uh, right? 
that would have been the moment to lock in some sort of riff or motif that cycles over and over. Mm-hmm. That's just like, super techy with the, tss, tss, you know, with the punch, with the off, the, the offbeat, uh, upbeat hi hat. Um, I thought the breakdown was super cool. Um, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was. I love how experimental it was. You yeah, know? Um, for sure. John, John yeah. would be proud. John Coltrane. Would be proud. John and John Selway, maybe even. And John Selway would probably. <laughs> <laughs> Nefertiti, what do you think? Oh, I just. Um, I felt like my favorite part was when the the full sax sample dropped, and it just had all of this uh, these effects and the the atmosphere built into it, and just kind of wondering, like, all right, where is this new direction going? And for a moment, I just felt like I was at like this, like underground, like fashion show, like I'm way too cool to talk to you. It's the 90s type of vibe. And sure. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Like that's exactly how I felt. And I just felt like I'm just I'm just way too cool for y'all, man. Like that's that's <laughs> all the energy I got. Like I'm avant garde. I'm futuristic. Yes, you You're don't get what level. I'm doing. Yes. You don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great. So yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I was feeling the whole time like, listening to it. Like I can see like fashion models like wearing just like plastic bags and like there's just like a can over their head. And it's just, like, <laughs> sure. Fashion models <laughs> you don't understand. Plastic bags. <laughs> yes, you don't understand. I love it. Um, yes, this is a great way to kind of finish out these entries for sure. So yeah. thank you to Nolas for entering for entering. That's Lucas over in chat. Thank you for entering. That was a great way to kind of uh, finish up on those entries. And now what's going to happen? Well, we're definitely going to listen to John's. But what I think we should do in the interest of time is you two are judges. You can listen to it. Just listen to it on your own time because we have to keep what? this train rolling. We're going on two hours here. The people wow, want to know dude, who's going to win. Is, this is this is wrong. So what <laughs> I need to do is while I listen to John Selway's entry with oh. chat, as you <laughs> two go conspire. This is, this is heinous, dude. <laughs> and it, it's not going anywhere. I promise it will still be there. Um, <laughs> go confer. Choose a winner amongst all those amazing entries. Come back and we can discuss a little bit about that deliberation process and uh, announce a winner. Does that sound good? Sure. Yeah. Um, sure. How do we go to our own room? Um, that's a great question, and I can't confirm that. So what I think you should do is just get out of this call and go start your own call somewhere uh, else. I think you can put us into a room. Man. How do I put yeah, you into a room? This is great right live click, stream content. You right click on Break the three room. dots. The three dots. See nothing click, about a room. And you click fuck off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, there perfect. should be the. I, I maybe had to. It maybe should be easier beforehand. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'm gonna. I guess we'll leave. Yeah, and just come back. I'll keep an eye on the participants um, thing. Hmm. Just email right, each other and, and confer it. All right, all right. I'm gonna face time you on Instagram. Okay? All right. You guys have to leave because okay. I'm gonna keep the call going. All right. Fine, man. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Well, they're gone for a little while. Oh, and now you're seeing two of me. We don't want that at all. Um, let me minimize Zoom. Oh, that's really minimal. And let me open up John Selway's entry and we can give it a listen. I hope you all have been enjoying this. Oh, John's short. I could have had them listen to it with me. I don't want this to be there. Let me go back to my normal view. John's is short, but I'm excited to hear it. He said it's not techno, so this is really exciting. I want to also th- say thank you all so much for joining and watching today and, and hyping up all the entries. And those of you who did enter, fantastic job. I know it's no easy task um, to judge out of all those great entries, which is why I pawned it off on to Justin and Nefertiti to do. So nobody can get mad at me in the end. No, but they're going to do their best, and they are very... um. um they're very sensible musicians, artists um, who know what they're doing and, and have no easy task ahead of them because they're so varied and, and they were also good. So why don't we give Mac uh, John's entry a listen from the Max Sax Challenge. John, our beloved uh, instructor and techno legend. Oh, we get a little live session. I wonder if John's still in chat.
love a nice little live jam. John, that was freaking masterful. That was amazing. I'm just going to run it back so we can just listen to it again. Um, but I will remind everybody because 343 Labs just reminded me in chat. 343 Labs is an electronic music school. And John Selway, the man, the myth, the legend himself, is teaching synthesis starting in two weeks. And Justin, who's going to come back on, one of our judges, um, is teaching an Ableton class that starts on Monday and a vocal production class as well. So if you all want to take classes with some of these folks, you hear what they're capable of. They've been doing this for years. This is freaking great, John. What an, what an amazing mix. And look how, like, I know it's not simple. Obviously, a lot goes into it, but nothing too, too uh, crazy going on here in terms of the amount of musical ideas which is fantastic. I'm going to let this jam in the background. Uh, Joseph McCaffrey, if you're available and you're watching, if you want to come relieve me for a bathroom break before we get into the final judgment, I would love that. Come say hello to everybody. It's been a while. And I'm going to boot up Zoom and get Zoom ready so when our judges call back in, I don't miss them. I also wonder, John, if you'd be interested in calling in. Let me know. Maybe uh, I know Max is in chat as well. If maybe both of you guys want to come in to the Zoom, Max, you have the Zoom link in the email thread if you want to forward it to John. Um, no. Okay. Um, I am going to just make Zoom bigger somehow. But yes. Oh, they're spamming your um, uh, emote in chat, Joe, if you want to come say hello to them. Um, say hi to Justin McCaffrey, everybody. He's going to come in and say hello to you all for a minute. I'm going to run to the bathroom and then we'll confer back with our judges and maybe even a little uh, Max Wild and uh, John Selway action if they do want to join and can and get a hold of that Zoom link. But I'll be right back, everybody. Talk to Joseph while we're here and then we'll get back and figure out who's going to win Ozone 9 from Isotope. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, man. Well, this chair is so much lower than it used to be. Long time no see, guys. It's been forever. How's it going? What's up, drunk bishop? Mm -mm -mm. I haven't been here in forever. This feels so different. I feel like he like ra raised his desk or lowered his chair or something. I feel so low. Oh, what's up, Falguna? How's it going? Mm -mm -mm. What's everyone been up to? Whoa, track reviews coming up on Saturday. I hope everyone's been working on uh, their track. I've been good. I've been good. You know, just doing my thing. My opinion overall of the entries. I mean, I was kind of passively listening, so I didn't really hear. I, I some of them really, some of the, like the stranger sounding ones, like the kind of caught my attention a little bit. But I haven't really been like super actively um, listening. I was, I've actually been, I was working on some of the upcoming Tatro Radio podcasts and throwing those together, recording some intros, outros. New episode tomorrow, 5 a.m. Pacific time. New episode. Tatro oh. Radio podcast. Oh, good shout out. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Track of you snuck up on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can always wait for the next one, you know, two Saturdays from now. Yeah, exactly. You if, you, yeah, if you want to go with the normies, the the non-members, Lamau. All right. Well, Tatro's back. I'm out of here. Have fun. Bye. Hi, 343TV. Bye, 343TV. Yeah. Oh. Did you tell them that um, you've been ice skating? Oh, no, I didn't. Just McCaffrey returned to the ice rink. He met a girl at the ice rink. Can you all believe that? Um, okay. I need to exit mini view. I need to go to my participants. And I need to, oh, we have some guests in the chat. Fantastic. I've got John. I've got Nefertiti. I've got Justin. You're all going to be seeing some guests. Oh, John is at a remote location. Let me make sure the volume is up and I can put myself. Can, wow. can you believe we have the man, the myth, the legend, John Selway himself? Wow. Come on. John, Dude, that's, that's, I loved it so much. You're muted, John. Yeah, John, you're muted. I will click ask to un there we go. Hey. Hey, Yo. John, thanks for coming <laughs> hey. in. It sounded like uh it sounded yeah. like Javon. It was so sick. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah uh, you know what? So you, ever see these, um, you ever see those uh blind test videos where like 
DJs identify records. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I was just watching the new one. They did like a 90s house one, like the second part. And uh, I was listening to all these records. I'm like, I got that record. I got that record. I know this. And right then was when I had downloaded the samples. I'm like, I might That's as well so do a 90s house style. Dude, the, like, I love how you like, so, yeah, synthes- how you, like create, how you sort of like <laughs> oh, made smacks. the disco string sample out of the synth. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> right, so, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, there was some little little secret little chopping oh, yeah. things oh, going yeah. on in there. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. great, man. You know what's amazing? Thanks. We've got Max Wild in as well. Say hello to everybody, Max. Ah, okay, I can hear you. Yes, and the, you the cool <laughs> thing is, I think um, myself, Justin, Nefertiti, kind of representing the virtual side of 343 Labs in our remote locations. John is yeah. on location in New York City. Uh, that's right at wow. the school we have classes going on in new york in person yeah dude you didn't know that not right at the moment but yeah maybe the starting audience tomorrow. doesn't know it justin starting why don't you tomorrow. give us more details go ahead justin i don't have that many more details, <laughs> exactly. so i'm teaching a class tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> and we have max wild who is from our school in berlin as well and I'm wearing the same sweater as in the, as in the challenge He never video. takes it off, if you can believe that, he never everybody. Takes it off. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, what do, I know Justin and Nefertiti have been listening along, and they just came back from a, a ruthless judging session. But Max and John, what did you all think of the entries today? I know you guys were watching and listening along. I loved it. Good loved stuff. It. Yeah, um, really nice. Such well a done, variety. Guys. Yeah, really cool. Uh, Thanks for uh, making me sound good. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, how do you feel being the center of attention being the for flipped. Like two hours? <laughs> Especially the, great. The, <laughs> the woo at the end got a lot of attention. Yeah, did you expect so it? That's my question. Did you put, did you like do that it knowing was, people would sample it? Totally not, not planned. It was like caught at the end. And then I was like, should I cut it out? Because then I edited it, you know, uh, yeah. and then I was like, should I cut it out? And I was like, nah, it'll probably be a great, thing to sample for sure and there you go yeah that was fire yeah, did, did you hear it in mine it's kind of in the background yeah i did john thank you for, for <laughs> incorporating it <laughs> maybe uh, next time we talked about it we talked about that in class actually with nefertiti like we definitely got to use the woo oh, absolutely yeah. um yeah i was curious awesome. who's gonna use it <laughs> i was thinking next time maybe john will give us a cool sample for next Ooh. month's sample challenge yes. Oh, I'd, I'd love to. Yeah, I can break out a synthesizer and get weird with it. Yeah. Yes. Let me know if you ever want a guitar sample. <laughs> oh, and I don't just, want to be left oh, out. Everybody oh, can man. provide. Well, we if we I think we should continue doing these once a month. This was obviously a lot of fun, and we had a lot of amazing participants. So if you all in the chat, let us know. A, did you have fun? Do you want us to do this again for like beginning of July? Um, and maybe uh, let us know if there's anything you want to, anything more you want to see. But let's keep doing it. Make sure you're in the Discord. Link is in the description. Join if you're not yet. All that good stuff. But hey, um, John and big Max. Shout out, oh, go ahead. Big shout out also to Isotope for uh, yes. sponsoring this event. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, uh, 343 TV's also been sponsored by a lot of awesome brands and we couldn't do it without you. Um, so thank you, Isotope, and uh, yeah, great prize to we don't know yet. To we don't know yet, which brings us to a good point. If you guys, John and Max, if you want to stick around, Nefertiti and Justin are going to reveal the big winner if you guys want to stick around. All right. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Do you guys, Justin and Nefertiti, maybe just what were you thinking about? What was the discussion like? A little bit of insight into the judging? Certainly. Um for my parameter um, was really a, a healthy balance between a creative application of the sample and also a um, a solid production around it that sort of, I don't know if the right word would be honor, sure. honored, but like respected the vibe of the sample and like, and, and, and kind of listened to it and went with it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I thought there were actually quite a few that did that. So it was, we had a nice little how wow about that uh, Nefertiti what about your personal criteria um my criteria was pretty much similar to yours I also tried to look at who used it in a way that made the most sense to their style versus like trying to just take the sample and make it into something that they're not all too familiar with and you, you kind of flop but not really but I, but I think everyone 
stuck to who they were as a creative and as an artist and they used it to their they used it to as best as they could yeah um uh, we had a question coming in chat before we reveal the winner. First of all, everybody is very enthusiastic, saying they had so much fun. And then people who didn't participate, like Star Stuff, saying definitely do this again. Would love to participate next time. You got it. Let's keep going. Let's oh, do yeah, this absolutely. monthly. Can't wait. You had a compliment. John uh, Pilgrim of Light said John's mix was so good. Does he teach mixing? That entry was super fire. They say. Thanks. Um, yeah, I don't actually do a mixing class, but I could. So mm. usually it's Abe Duque that is one of the, you know, he's our good friend Abe does mixing a lot. Um, yeah. And who else does mixing for us? I think it's just Abe. I yeah, guess it's yeah, Abe. But, but, Abe, but Abe, 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 Abe and John right used to you. live together. So yeah, they kind exactly. Of, they're pretty much like uh, a married couple at this Left point. Left brain, right brain, same brain. Yes. <laughs> and Abe is starting a mixing class this weekend coming up. Oh. So again. Very interesting. Theforthelabs.com if people want information on all these classes that are happening. Um, well, why don't we take the suspense out of things, I guess, drum roll, and then um, which one of you is oh, going to say it? You announce it, Nefertiti. You announce it. Oh, and the winner is Falguna. Falguna! Hey! hey. hey. Falguna. Falguna was the first entry, am yeah, I correct? The first yeah, entry of the was. day. Let me really quick um, bounce out of this Zoom call and back into the Discord and we'll play Falguna's track so everybody can be reminded. But congratulations to Falguna, a very good entry. You know what I need to say about Falguna is Falguna uploaded it straight to Discord. Falguna, you got to tell us where people can go listen to your music because it's really good. Yeah. We need your SoundCloud link or Spotify or whatever it may be. Please, please. But I'm playing it in the background right now. You guys can't hear it, but it's there. I promise. <laughs> not an easy decision, I assume, because there were so no, many fire. No, not at all. But no, I, I can explain. I'd be happy to explain why the decision was taken. Sure. So yeah. That people maybe understand. Yeah. Because I don't want people to think that uh, it was like the easiest decision. What really it came down to was the composition was the most, was the tightest. Yeah. The composition was really the tightest. And so the, like the chords that were created also were um, quite advanced. Um, yeah. Theory, like in terms of theory, they, they, they showed a nice understanding of music theory and reharmonization. And then also the layering of tones across the track from section to section was very smooth. And so it was it was the one that allowed me to disappear into it the most. Sure. Any final yeah. thoughts on it, Nefertiti? Um, well, just like you said, I definitely want I want links to all all of it. Yeah, just yeah, for sure. All of it. I want to hear more. And I, I definitely want, you know come back again definitely participate in in next month's uh challenge along with everyone else no it was not easy i mean you it's two hours of music and like 12 13 people and you know yeah. having to like re-listen to certain tracks to like refresh the memory but sure. yeah i think it was well deserved yeah congrats to falguna congrats to all the entries today they were all like so varied. Uh, everybody had such a creative, awesome take on it. And I can tell that people, a lot of people were pushing themselves for this challenge to do something, you mm -hmm. know, better than maybe the last track they produced. So great work to everybody. Hopefully, at least at the very least, everybody received some solid feedback, which is, you know, a pretty decent prize. But Falguna, um, you are the lucky winner of Isotope Ozone 9 Advanced. Now, Max, oh, what man. does uh, Falguna need to do to get in touch so that we can make sure Falguna can get that prize? Um, Falguna, you're going to need to just uh, send us uh, an email. Just send it to hello at 343labs.com, and then we'll connect you with Isotope, and they'll take care of setting up the license for you. Perfect. Well, it seems like we have inspiration and energy to go forward and do this for another month. So I hope everybody will stay tuned and stay active in the Discord and feel free to use those channels because there's places where you can share work that isn't challenge related as well. And who knows, we could have a sample from John, we could have a sample from Justin, who knows what sample will be for next month, but we'll get that out really soon. So stay tuned uh, for the Discord or we're going to take Don't forget this to um, tune in for uh, Justin's stream yes. tomorrow. And uh, Abe Duque on Friday and John Selway on Saturday. 
John, what you got coming up on Saturday? I got Christian Smith is is a guest again. We're gonna work on some techno together. Yeah. Heck oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's Power a guy house. who makes techno. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest guys that makes techno. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then that's super cool. Yeah. So amazing rest of the week on 343 TV. I'll also just give a quick plug uh, for myself because we did the sample challenge today, but Tatro Talks, we had a great interview with Evan Gia, who is this amazing uh, singer, songwriter, producer that uh, has been on tour opening for Odessa and um, is going to be going out on her first headlining tour. Some really great insight in that interview. People looking to build up their career in the uh, music industry. So check out that interview. It's up on the 343 Labs channel today. Definitely check it out and check out Justin's show tomorrow, Abe's show on Friday, and John's show on Saturday for 343 TV. Um, John, Nefertiti, Justin, Max, thank you for hopping in and uh, making this stream so great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, this guys. was so much fun, man. Everybody yeah. all at once. Perfect. Thank you all for being a great community. It's a party. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. This has been another production of 343 TV. Make sure you're subscribed over at youtube.com slash 343 labs for more awesome content like this. And we will see you all next time. Peace out.